What do you believe about your God? Well, the Trinity is just not something taught by anybody. What do you believe else? about your God? So you didn't answer quite this. Is what you did I last believe week. that I believe about my God is one person, the Father. That's it. And prove it from Scripture. Give me the passages. Uh, Jesus tells you the Father is the only true God. That doesn't help your case. Prove it from Scripture that there's only one person who's the only true God. John 17 well, doesn't help your case. Right. But yeah, so 20,000 times God uses single personal pronouns. Never well, once. You don't know what you're talking about, because I'm going to show you where singular personal pronouns are used for collective wholes for entire groups that are classified as one individual. That shows you don't know the Bible. OK, I mean, well, show me where they mean three. Then. Yeah, I'm going to show it to you. Take it easy. Stop barking, dude. Take it easy. When you I'm find just... three, God is three. That'll be great. No, I don't need to find it. You need to prove your assertion. You don't shift the burner proof. You need to show that God is only one person. You haven't. Take it easy. We're going to get to your barbecue in a minute. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanite? First, the fight against them. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. When it says Judah shall go up, at this time, it's talking about the tribe of Judah, not Judah, the son. It's in the book of Judges. It uses third person, imperfect, masculine, singular verb. Who is Judah here? Why is God using a masculine, singular verb to describe the tribe of Judah? Because it's obviously like what you said. It contains multiple persons within the tribe oh, of Judah. Oh, oh, so do you take back that your argument singular pronouns? Because I'm going to bury that argument. Or do I need to continue to give you more examples? No, I mean, my no, argument is... Go on from it. Everyone records you. It's recorded. You said... Well, no. That God is referred to in singular personal pronouns often as a case to show he's one person. Do you take right. that back or do I need no, to keep bearing no, because, because I wanted to add to it. God is never referred to as three persons ever. It doesn't matter because God is never referred to as one person. Show me where it says he's one person. Over and over in scripture, we have no one God. singular personal pronouns. Don't well, prove the it. argument, the, the burden of proof would be on you, Sam. To no, it's on you. You made persons. the assertion. You made the assertion he's one person. Show right. me that you prove it to me. Well, the burden of proof is that God is three persons on you, Sam. No, you said he's one person. We got you recorded, right. son of Satan. Prove right. that to me. Because when Jesus says the Father is the only true God, God, myself, me alone, it would be kind of silly to think that no, myself, it would be me stupid alone, if is you three took John 17, 3 out of context, like your father, the devil. So How is that the, out of context? Because Sam? in Explain the context of John 17, if you stop manifesting and barking, in the context of John 17, Jesus is not saying the Father is the only true God to the exclusion of the Son. It's to the exclusion of everyone else if I read context, which you don't know context. But I want to play your game. Since Jesus is not the only true God, he's a creature in your view. So I want you to explain to me Revelation 19, 12, because I want to see how you're going to exegete Scripture, because using your method, you make your father the devil proud because you're going to butcher Scripture. Revelation 19, 12, speaking of Jesus, the word. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name inscribed which no one knows but himself. Only he knows that name, but he's mm -hmm. not the Father, he's not the Spirit. So now, using your method of exegesis, I just showed you Jesus knows more than the Father. <laughs> you... No, because the Father gave him the name. So that does not say it here. No, no, well, no. Obviously... Revelation 19, 12 says only he knows the name. Right. End of story. We don't go anywhere else like you did with John 17, 3. We're going to stick here like you wanted to stick with John 17, 3. So no. Jesus knows more than the Father. No, because we're told the Father has given Jesus a name. Not so here. Not in Revelation 19, 12. Sorry. Well, yeah, but that my point is, Sam, is you can't. No, that's not your point. Because okay. if you don't just read John 17, 3, but read in context, I'm going to do your funeral service. So now you agree. So Sam. We go beyond John 17, 3, right? We go beyond John 17, right? Son of Satan? Okay. So we go beyond John 17, 3, right? Son of Satan? We don't just stick to one verse? Like right here? We don't just stick to Revelation 19, 12? Sam, I know you like to do this because you don't have an okay. argument. Okay. Do you want me to send you out or you can answer the question? Room, no. yeah, Remember you can get the singular pronoun? So now you recant that? I don't recant it, no. Uh -huh. So are you going to address my point that singular pronouns are used for entire nations and... <clears throat> It's right. Yeah, I mean, that, that's 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 perfectly fine. That's true. Okay. So we we can concede that. Now, can you deal with the plurals used for God, like in Isaiah fifty four five? The plurals used for God. Well, God is plural, just like the heavens are plural, right? Oh, yeah. so now you're admitting God is a plural, but heavens there are three heavens. That doesn't help your case. Right. But my point earlier, Sam, was that nobody tries to teach that God is three of anything. That was the point that I was trying to make. Yeah, why mean, does the Bible have to be written in the way that you insist for it to be teaching? Not, not, 
not insisting. I'm just asking for one single teaching where somebody tries to convince me that God is a three person being. Uh, no one wants to convince you because you're not the standard. I don't care if you're convinced, but you think I'm here to convince you. It's like me trying to convince Satan. No, all I want to do is what the, the Bible teaches and then study the Bible in context and then derive my doctrine from what the Bible teaches as a whole. I'm not here. Well, to, you think I'm here to convince you? I'm not. I'm here to refute your doctrine to show well, that. Right. You come to a conclusion that nobody concludes in the gospel. That, that's my point. That's a lie. Can you show me where anyone in the gospels denied that Christ has gotten the flesh? Well, no, that Moses was also Elohim, though. No, right? that's not the same context. You're, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you what you're referring to here. Exodus 4, 16, Exodus 7, 1, correct? Right. See, buddy, been there, done that, retired the t-shirt. You're not quoting yeah. anything new to me. For you to say that's analogous to Christ, can you show me anywhere in the Pentateuch where Moses is identified as Yahweh, <clears throat> who is to come and do the things that the Old Testament says Yahweh does when he shows up? No, of course not, because Christ is the one that God gave all authority to. No, but he gave all authority to Moses. So why aren't those texts applied to Moses? I don't think he gave Moses all authority in heaven and earth, did he? No, but Jesus didn't have an authority until after the resurrection, right? Right. That's, yeah. Christ but then answer my objection. I'm talking about Christ coming into the world is fulfilling passages that Yahweh will come into the world and his glory right. shall be seen. Right. God the Father. Can you show me that? What about Moses? Yeah, God the Father did come into the world because he dwelled in the temple of the no, Messiah. No, didn't say God the Father. You butchered Isaiah 40. Didn't well, say the God. Father, the Father that dwells in me does his work. So Jesus was the temple that God the Father Irrelevant to the fact that Isaiah 40 says Yahweh will come. And if you're arguing that the Father being in Jesus is why that can be said of Christ, then if Christ is in you, does that mean you're the coming of Christ? No, because they haven't begun all authority like Jesus has. Okay, I'm but, in that Starbucks yeah, line. So. That. Take it easy. I'm going to refute you. Uh, I'm going to have a joy at destroying guard. Just be patient. But we just went back to the original point. You're alluding to Matthew 28, 18, which is after the resurrection. So let's go back to my argument and address it. While on earth, he's identified as Yahweh. He's not ever, he never tries to make the case that he's God on earth. Ever. No, he does make the case to be God without being the father. Yes. Mm, no, no, he said... No, he doesn't, he doesn't try to make the case that he's God ever. Yes, he does. He makes the case he's God without being the Father. Yeah. Psalm 8, 1 and 2. O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Who displays your splendor above the heavens? From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. So who's going to ordain praise from infants and nursing babes? God the Father through the Messiah. Good, good. No, 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 no. It doesn't say. Where does it say through the Messiah? See, now, like a demon, you had it. Show me where it says Messiah. No, again, God's going to do all these things through the Messiah. Can you just deal with the text, man? Who is going to ordain praise from infants? Jehovah. Yahweh our Lord, right? What you think is the Father, correct? Yes. Now, would any of the Pharisees object to children praising Yahweh? Would they reject what? Would any Pharisee scribe object to children praising Yahweh? I don't think they would reject children praising Jehovah. Okay, so now explain Matthew 21, 15 and 16. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the marvelous things which he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Because I'm going to ask you about Oceana in a minute. Hosanna to the son of David. They became indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? Yeah, yes. Careful, brother. I'm going to have yes. to get rid of you the mic. Okay. And Jesus Sorry. said to them, yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. Now, pay attention. Hosanna to the son of David. They're saying this to him. The religious authorities are indignant that they're praising the son of David, not God the Father. And Jesus uh, justifies it by saying, yeah, because Psalm 8 says that's what children do. They praise Yahweh. So how can this be justification for Jesus to be praised by children? Because they're praising the son of David. And the Jews were upset because they don't have a problem with children praising Yahweh. They have a problem with Children praising Jesus because, like you, they didn't think he's Yahweh. How does this justify Jesus being praised by children? Because, again, Christ says, if you see me, you see the Father. He's an image That's of That's not what it says here. Are. Nope. It says, well, to the Son of David. The Father's not the Son of David. Right. But God the Father is dwelling in his temple, the Messiah. So why didn't he say, they're praising the Father and me, not me? He's justifying the children praising him. Right. But Christ tells you, like in John 12, 44, if you believe in me, you do not believe. Yeah, but in believe John 12, 37 to 41, which now you're doing Bible ping pong and I'll jump with you. It says that the Yahweh that Isaiah saw, the glory he saw was that of Christ. So do you believe that Christ was the one in Isaiah 6? He's the glory of the invisible God. Yeah. But the glory that Isaiah saw was Yahweh seated on the throne. He saw Yahweh visibly. So do you believe that was Christ? Right. Well. Yahweh is not visible, right? Do you believe that Jesus is that Yahweh that Isaiah saw? 
No, I do not believe he's Yahweh. But John 1.18 says, no one can see God at any time unless the Son of God reveals him. So how did Isaiah see Yahweh? Well, he didn't see Yahweh. He saw the... Yes, he did. My eyes have seen the king, Yahuwah Sebaot. That's what the text says. Right, yeah. Well, nobody has so ever How did he God. see him if it's not the sun? Because he saw the glory, the, the brilliant light, the jasper. And John the... said, see, you're not listening. This is why you waste my time. John said, the glory he saw was Yahweh appearing visibly on a throne. Here it is. Right, right. So how did he see Yahweh visibly on the throne... When John tells us you cannot see God apart from the Son, making him known. And then John says that was Jesus' glory when Yahweh appeared to him visibly. So do you believe this is Jesus? Well, yeah, you can you can represent somebody and be called another. Like, like for instance, in the centurion, oh. when he comes to Capernaum, yeah. it's actually the Jewish elders, but they tell you the centurion showed up. So can you show me where Paul is called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, when they see him because he represents Jesus? Well, yeah, I mean, Saul's when when Saul was um, persecuting the disciples. Yes, uh, that's Christ, not what I asked you. Can you show me where they looked at Saul and saying, "You are Jesus Christ, the Son of God"? No, I know the about agency. I believe me, Eliak. I know it better than you. But can you show me when they looked at Saul or Peter or <clears throat> or Thomas because they represent Christ? They went up to him. You are Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No, I, no, Saul, Paul doesn't do that, but the authors do. That was my. Point. No, that's not what I asked you. Can let me try a fourth time. That's why I get tired of you. When I ask you a fourth time, which you don't answer, can you show me when someone sees Saul, he goes, you are the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, because he represents Christ. The authors do in the, in the scriptures, yes. No, they, they refer to that. that. Can you they show me where they say it? Yeah, like in the John's baptism, uh, when Christ came to, uh, when he was baptized in the disciples in John 3, it tells you that when Jesus came to uh, baptize with the disciples. Yes, and all that's going to bury you because you're making were, my case. All people How would were you know? Can How I would you know? I'm answering you. John 4, 1 and 2. It's like, I can't, can't talk for me. How would you know Jesus didn't baptize without John having told you who did it? I know what you're referring to. John 3, 22, John 3, 26, yeah. John 4, verse 1 and 2. How yeah, would you my, know that Jesus wasn't the one actually baptizing if the text didn't tell you? My point is that John says that Jesus... You have no point. It. Answer my question. How would right. you know... I'm going to repeat it a fifth time. How would you know... That Jesus wasn't the one actually baptizing if the text didn't tell you. Even though John says Jesus was baptizing and he wasn't? Okay, let's try it again. See, this is why I'm going to John tell clarifies you, like, in John 4. How would you know if John didn't tell you that? Because John tells us in verse 4. Thank you. So this is where you're going to do your own funeral service. Unless the text says it, that Jesus was baptizing through an agent representing him, you would not have known that. So now can you show me again... Let's go back to my objection. Show well, me. I was trying to go on the Trinity, Sam. And Not I am this. on the Trinity because I'm showing I, you that the Yahweh that he saw was Jesus Christ. So can but we that agree? doesn't prove the Trinity, Sam. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, one more time. I'm going to get to the Holy Spirit in a minute if you're patient. Take it easy, dude. I'm going to pulverize you in a But minute. this is kind of blank, go back to this build to God, again. Sam. Let's go back to this passage again. Since children praise Yahweh, how does it justify the son of David being praised by Yahweh, quoting a text, the son of David being praised by children, quoting text, where it doesn't talk about the Messiah being praised by children, but Yahweh being praised? Because Christ says that when you worship him, you worship the father. You honor the son, you honor the father. And how do you worship the son? Since you wanted to bury yourself with John 5. Because, because Christ represents God the father. So anything you do no, to Christ. No, but that's not what it says. It says you are to honor him as you honor the father. So Yeah, because if you do not, father? you do not honor the father who sent him. Right? What honor does the father receive that the son is supposed to receive? God the father is God. Jesus Christ represents What God. honor does the father receive that you're supposed to give to the son? Just honor and worship. Just like what kind of worship honored. does the father receive that the son is supposed to receive in the same way that the father receives it? They don't receive the same type of worship. You want to bet? I'm going to show it to you they right don't. now. You want to they bet? They, they're all, you you want to bet? Okay, so. Revelation 5.13. Hold on. Revelation 5.13. I'm going to now bust your lie. You said he doesn't, right? Okay, Revelation 5.13. You want to bet? Revelation 5.13. And every created thing which is in heaven and on earth. Now, I, want, I know you read English. I can show you the Greek if you want. Every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and the sea and all things in them, every creature in all of creation, I heard saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever. Every creature in all creation gives the Lamb the same blessing, honor, and glory, might for the same duration. Why did you lie? I didn't lie. 
You're not letting me explain my no, position okay. at Do all. you agree with this passage? Yeah, of course I agree with it. I don't agree with okay, your interpretation you of it. What does God the Father receive from every creature that the Lamb doesn't receive here? <clears throat> it's the throne that they're worshiping. It's not Jesus as God. And to the Lamb, the right. same blessing, honor, glory. So answer the question, tap dance. Yeah. Again, what, I, what kind yeah, of yeah. honor? What kind of honor does the Father receive from every creature that the Lamb doesn't receive here? They only worship one as God in heaven. Sam. Can you answer the question for the love of your Satan? Yeah. What Sam, honor please. does the Father receive from every creature that the Lamb doesn't? The honor is that everybody in heaven worships the Father as God, not Jesus. As okay, God. what honor does the Lamb receive or the Father receives from every creature that the Lamb doesn't? The honor of being God in heaven. Doesn't say that in this text, so stop lying. Yes. What the, honor the, the throne does the Father receive? See why I'm going to send you to your vomit? Because you can't answer questions like a coward. Well, you're not, you're not allowing me to really talk, Sam. No, because you, you're jumping from one passage to another. And this is what Bible butchers do. They can't stick with one text. They run. So I'm jumping with you. Okay, now, let's see no, if you're going to answer this. this into, Sam, your hand, I to into your hand. Yeah. Common sense. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Yahweh, God of truth. Psalm 31, 5. Okay. Acts 7, 59, 60. They went on stoning Stephen as he was calling out and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, Jesus is in heaven. The last place that God needs an agent is in heaven. Why is Stephen, a Jew, praying to Jesus at the point of death to receive his spirit in the exact same way the psalmist prays to Yahweh? I don't think I'm going to be able to answer. You're going to interrupt me, so I don't know. The answer, I want to see if you, how long you're going to last. Go ahead. You're, you're not going to answer. Can you answer, answer well, the question? Yeah, because, because Christ is... Acknowledge God the Father for giving him the authority to give life. You didn't to answer others, the so. question again, right? Yes, I did. I'm trying Why to answer. Why is Stephen praying to Jesus okay. All right. 